Hey guys, Hoffbau, we're back for the second half of 1.4. I forgot to tell you that the first video was only half of the lesson because I got confused and didn't have a cover sheet on that one. So that's my bad. I apologize. For this second half, we're just going to have two little concepts, concavity and average rate of change, and you will need a graphing calculator. Before we get started, though, I want to finish a couple examples that I managed to miss in the first part. It's a good review of part one. So this says now use a graphing calculator to evaluate all these points. Um, so I'm going to take a pause and I'm going to find these maxes and mins and label them on the graph. But I'm not going to take time to, well, I'm not going to take time to go through them all on the video because I feel like that is something you should be getting good at. So give me just a second. All right, guys, so I typed this into the calculator, x to the fifth minus 4x cubed plus 2x minus 3. Let's pray I did it right. Here's my calculator. x to the fifth. I did the red one. Minus 4x cubed plus 2x minus 3. Okay, ignore that top one. I'm going to use that one in a second for the next problem. All right, then I graphed it. Looked like this, same as this. Then I found all the maxes and mins, and they are down here. There was a max over here at negative 1.49 and negative 0.09. And... Then the next max, I should not delete those probably. The next max I had was over here, and this one was at 0.42 comma negative 2.44. And then I had the mins. Found a min at negative 0.42. And the y value there was negative 3.56. And then this final min over here is at 1.49, negative 5.91. I think I can remember that. 1.49, negative 5.09, I probably got it wrong, 0.91, yep, got it wrong. Okay, my dogs are making a lot of noise. Pausing the video again. All right, guys, half hour back, hopefully the dogs will behave. All right, um, let's see, this was a min, this was a max. Now, I don't know if you remember, but end behavior, hope you remember, end behavior meant as you further go to the left on this graph, so as x becomes more negative, this graph is going down. That means that this graph has no absolute min because it continues down. On the right end, this graph is going up. So if we were describing end behavior, we would say as x goes further to the right, the value of the function is going up. So this graph has no absolute max, but it has some relatives, some local min maxes and mins. So I'm going to go up a little bit. And try to fill some of these in. All right, it has a relative max here. The maximum value of the function is the y value, and it occurs at an x value, and that's this first red one. Okay, if we go to the left, we have come to a negative, uh, I'm sorry, a min, 
and that min occurs when x is negative 0.42 and the value of the function is negative 3.56 I think I can't really read what I wrote there I hope I have that one somewhere is it this one oh that I'm at a min here yep I think that's right what I wrote okay then as we continue to the right, there is a maximum, and that's this red one over here, and that occurs when x is 0.42, just to the right of the y-axis, and the y value was negative 2.44. And then we get clear over here, and we have at 1.49, a minimum value of negative 0.59, uh, negative 5.91, and that is a relative min because on the far left the graph gets more and more negative so it has no absolute max and mins now this is where it gets a little hairy when you have a graph this complicated increasing or decreasing is remember as you go left to right so as i go left to right it is whoa that's not what i meant to do I'm trying to get a highlighter pen here this one's going up then it goes down, then it goes up in here, this little piece, then it goes down, and then it goes up again. So it is increasing, and in those three places I have said that it's yellow there. So I use x values, remember, for this, x intervals. So I say from the left is negative infinity until it gets to this x value of negative 1.49. It was going up. Then it was going up again, this little piece way down here, from an x value of negative 0.42 over to an x value of positive 0.42. That little piece in there. Then it went down again, and then it goes up from an x value of 1.49 to the right. It is decreasing. Let's see. Can we use purple maybe? in here and in here so the x values between there and there are negative 1.49 to negative 0.42 and then again over here from positive 0.42 to 1.49 it was going down over there all right i am going to skip this example i will go ahead and put it on the notes later um but I'm just thinking this video is going to get long if I do that one as well. I will show you what the graph looks like because I do have it in my calculator here. If I turn this one on and I go down and clear this one out. Okay, so it has, let me just draw a quick sketch. It has something going on like this and this value appears to be at zero, zero. Okay, and then it has a max and a min, I'm sorry, two mins on either side, and they both occur at the same y value. All right, yep, I'm just going to skip this. Moving on. Too many examples. All right, today's lesson, we're going to talk about concavity. Concavity, as explained to me, is whether the graph is happy or whether the graph is sad. In other words, it is the bend in the graph. If it is this little bowl shape, okay, it is up, it's called concave up. Like a bowl or a grin or a smile, okay? up like a bowl and this shape put little eyeballs in here so it looks like a smile okay this shape is down like a frown when it's curving down like this we say it is concave down like a frown okay the point where a graph changes from concave up to concave down is called an inflection point where the concavity changes.
And this is something you can only find accurately using calculus. So we're just going to estimate them today. So that really makes this lesson kind of easy. But this is concave up on this side, and then there's inflection point. Just some examples here. And this side is concave down. See, it changed the bend right in there. If it has to do with this tangent line and, and how that goes, but you can worry about that next year. Okay, this, notice if I continued that path like that, that's concave down. And then over here, it's smiley again, so it's concave up. And on this one, we have concave up. And then from here on over, it's concave down. Okay, it doesn't have to be going all the way back down to be concave down. It can continue just like that. All right, but we're not going to get too fussy about this. I just wanted to show you some more examples. When you get into calculus, you'll be able to figure out this point of inflection here. But for today, we would just estimate, maybe we would have called it here negative 2, 0 as an inflection point and 2, 0 as an inflection point, and we would have said this piece in here is concave down. And then these pieces over here, whatever what point we want to use, is concave up because it's like he's smiling down here. Okay. And eventually in calc, you'll talk about concave up but decreasing, concave up and increasing, concave down but decreasing, concave down but increasing. We don't have to do that for us. So we are supposed to graph this on the graphing calculator, approximate the relative or absolute extrema, include a sketch, also state the x intervals where it's increasing or decreasing, and then estimate the inflection point or points and state the x intervals where it is concave up or concave down. So let's try typing this in. x cubed to the right plus 9x squared. I'm going to try a standard window, zoom 6. That doesn't look like a very good window. I think we need to look up much higher because I believe it uh, had a maximum way over in here somewhere. Up and down is the y-axis. And if we want to look further up, maybe we want to make this 60, 70, 80, 100. I don't know. I'm going to try 80. Nope, still not high enough. But it is the y that needs to be higher. I'll try 120 this time. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to drag this over here. And just to help you out, I'm going to write my x values were negative 10 to 10. And the scale was 1. The scale really doesn't matter, but it was counting by 1s. If I wanted to make it look better up and down instead of that big, heavy, thick dotted line down the middle there, I could say I'm going to go from negative 10 to 120 but I'm going to change my scale to count by 10s or 20s, and then it won't be such a thick line, okay? So my Ys were from negative 10 to 120, and my scale was 10s. But again, the scale's not important. If you had that big heavy line, it doesn't matter. Then I need to find this max and min. So I'm going to calculate, second trace, a maximum, and it's somewhere over here. I'm going to say it's between negative 10 and 0. That looks good, somewhere in there. And I got, now you need to round that, calculator error. If you round that to the nearest 100, that'll be this 9 will round that to a 0, which will round this to a 0, which will round this to a 6. So it's negative 6, comma, 108. And then I'm hoping that one's 0, 0, but maybe it's not. And I'm going to calculate that min. I think it should be 0, 0. 
but I kind of remember that it didn't work out very well. I'm going to say it's between negative 1 and positive 1. Oh, this is 0, and this is 0 because it's times 10 to the negative 6, so it's a teeny, 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 tiny decimal, and this one's times 10 to the negative 11. If I actually went trace 0, enter, it is 0, 0, and as I go to the right, the y value is increasing. When I go to the right this way, the y value is increasing. Okay. Well, what did I do there? So the min is down here at 0, 0. All right, what were we supposed to do? Um, this is a relative max of 108, and it happens at x equals negative 6. This one down here is a relative min, and the y value is 0 at x equals 0. All right, include a sketch. Also state the x intervals where it's increasing or decreasing. So the first piece is increasing from the left until we get to an x of negative 6. It is increasing. And then it is increasing again over here from 0 to the right. It is decreasing in here between the x values of negative 6 and 0. Now, the inflection point in the concavity. As we look at this graph, this piece over here is looking like a frown. It's pointing down. Okay? So we have the frown down face over here to the left. And then we have the bowl up shape, which will be the concave up on this half. Somewhere in between there, it has a inflection point and we need to estimate that now we could just do trace on our calculator and trace along till we think we notice where it changes um, we could just say this was at negative six and this one was at zero so we're thinking halfway in between would be negative three and just use that one this is only an estimate i'm not going to ask you to find an exact value but you do need the x value at that point. So somewhere in here was negative 354. And to the left of that, it was concave down. From the left until it got to about negative 3. And then it's concave up. From negative 3 going to the right. All of those are x values, okay? Increasing, decreasing, concavity are all based on the x values. The maximum value is the value of the function, so that's the y value, and you say where it occurs. All right, we're going to do one more, and we're just going to estimate. We're going to call this 0, 0, and we're going to call this, I have no idea, 1.3 comma negative... One, two, three, four. How's that? All right. So now, um, again, it goes down forever and up forever on opposite ends. If we were doing end behavior, just for good practice, we would say the y's are going down as x goes off to the left and the y values are going up as x goes off to the right okay that's end behavior didn't really ask that but it's good practice all right then it said find relative max and min so we have a relative max of zero at zero and a relative min of negative 4 when x equals 1.3. All right. That leaves us with increasing, decreasing, and concavity. Increasing from the left until we get to 0. Then it goes down until 1.3, and then it goes up again 
from 1.3 to the right. So the decreasing piece was in here from 0 to 1.3. All right, concavity, we need to estimate an inflection point. I have no idea. I'm just going to stick it out right there. And I'm going to call it 1.8, negative 2. How's that sound? We were estimating, remember? 1.8, negative 2 is that red dot. So to the left of that red dot, it was concave down or sad. And to the right of that red dot, the bend is like a cup or up. Uh, that's what it is. It's not a bowl. It's a cup. I couldn't remember the rhyme. Cup is up and frown is down. Now I got it. Uh, not re-recording. Sorry, guys. So it is concave down like a frown on the left of that. So from negative infinity until 1.8. And let me erase over here so that you can see. We decided to call this in here. 1.8, negative 2, and we called that our inflection point. And this then was concave down. And then the piece over here that's going this way, like this, is concave up, like a cup. And that is from 1.8 and to the right as the x values. All right, so reviewed all those and covered concavity. Then I have a beautiful blocking slide. So if you're watching the video and you can't you need to go back and rewatch average rate of change, you'll look for this purple thing. And then we have one quick new concept called average rate of change. Very important in calculus. We're just going to practice the arithmetic of it today. The average rate of change between any two points is the slope. If you can just remember that it's slope through those points. The line through any two points on a curve is called a secant line. The average rate of change is the slope from this point, which we found by putting a in. So this would be a comma f of a. And then we put b in here to the function. So this would be b comma f of b from your function notation. And then they do the slope between those two points. Okay, so the fancy way of writing that would be change in y over change in x. But we're gonna be real lazy and we're just gonna remind ourselves it's slope. So you take the y's and you subtract and you take the x's and you subtract. All right, so that line, by the way, was called a secant line. You don't need to know that. So over here is the important business. It says, so you put a, the first x value in and you get the y value out. And then you put a second x value in and you get the y value out. And then you find the slope between those two points. So I'm going to do one by hand, and then I'm going to show you a way to cheat on the calculator. So for this number four, it says you put in a three. This is your first x, and this is your second x. These are both x's. So you put in a three, and you get something out, and then you put in a five, and you get something out. When I put in a three, I have negative two times nine plus five is negative 18 plus 5, I'm thinking is negative 13. Hope I did that right. Then you put a 5 in. So you have negative 2 times 5 squared plus 5. 5 squared is 25 times negative 2 would be negative 50 plus 5 would be negative 45. Now, once you've put the 3 and the 5 in, then you have to do the slope between those two points. Okay, so that would be y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. Again, it doesn't matter which order. You could do, 
The y's have to go on top, x is on the bottom, but you could do 3 minus 5 and negative 13 minus negative 45. You'll get the same answer in the end. Your signs will be different top and bottom, but it won't matter. Negative 32 over 2 is negative 16. So from 3 to 5, the value of this function drops 16. It goes down 16. It's the average rate of change over that chunk is going down 16. All right. Now, rather than plug these next ones in by hand, I'm going to show you my little calculator cheat. I need to plug in to the function a negative 3 and a negative 2. So I'm going to type the function in. x to the fourth sorry I can't get this on my screen very well plus 2x to the third maybe this is since I'm so slow not really a time saver but minus x minus 1 then what you can do is go second graph and look at the table. If your table's kind of wonky and it doesn't have the values near zero, you can go second window and tell your table to start at zeros and count up by ones. And make sure these are both on auto auto. Okay. If you go down here and it looked like this with that black box over there, you'd want to go back over to auto and hit enter. Then you're going to go to the, to the table, and the two values we were looking for were negative 3 and negative 2. So all I have to do is write down that at negative 3, it was at 29. And at negative 2, it is at 1. And then the average rate of change means, in my little brain, I just have to remember that this means slope. So I go 1 minus 29 over negative 2 minus negative 3 is negative 28 over 1. So it drops 28. The value of the function drops 28 from negative 3 to negative 2. So it decreases in that one interval there. Negative 28 goes down 28 y values, function values. Okay. And then I have this one x cubed plus 5x squared. I'm going to cheat one more time and type it in. Try to fix this one. x cubed plus 5x squared minus 7x Minus 4. Did I get it right? I was trying to type over. All right, then I don't really care about the graph. I could look at the graph, but I care about the values from 1. It is at negative 5. And then remember, this is the other x value at 3. It is at 47. So if I do the slope, 47 minus negative 5 over 3 minus 1, I get positive 48 over 2, or 24. It increases 24. Sometimes, guys, the change is very tiny. These are all pretty big values. But it is increasing 24 points over that in a row from 1 until 3. If I were to graph this, and I could go trace 1, there it's at negative 5, and at 3 it's up at 47. I have a different window set here, but in between there it went up 24 on the y. Okay, So average rate of change is just slope. You just have to plug the values into the function. You do it by hand on the home screen or on the graph. Okay, After watching both parts of the video, now you have a short worksheet on 1.4. It will ask about maxes and mins, it will ask about increasing, decreasing, concavity, and then average rate of change. All right, guys. Thanks.